truck is in the shop and I'll be the first to say that when it comes to working on my trucks um, as any mechanic or home mechanic will tell you sometimes the small things get left behind and you just don't worry about those uh, case in point the small uh, fan for the cooling in the headliner makes a rattle so I'm not really concerned about that because it's the middle of summer and it's not a big deal and I can deal with it at any time but when it comes to things on my vehicle that are critical and to be maintained or to be looked at when there's something going on I do not mess around with the brakes and you can see here that I mean the calipers and the rotors I mean they will all need to be cleaned and replaced at some point in time um, I'm not quite at that point yet but where I'm having an issue with this truck is um, it started about two weeks ago and I was driving and I was going down the road and it felt like the truck was sort of dragging itself and it didn't feel quite right and I couldn't figure out what was really going on with it. And what I started to notice was that at around 70 kilometers an hour, the truck would start to get a shake in the front end, but it would only be on the one side. So I would slow down, it would get a little bit worse, I'd slow down and it got to a point where I couldn't actually drive and I actually had to stop. And when I stopped and I got out and I came over, I checked, I, what I basically did was a heat and a sniff test. Um, and I checked the driver's side, there was no issues, but when I came to the passenger side, uh, both hot and you could smell brakes. So banged on, the, banged, on the, banged on the caliper a few times to hopefully try and get that to maybe free up or whatever's going on with it. Got it to loosen up a bit, um, got to a point where I could actually get it back home and it's been basically parked since. Um, I found that if I do take the truck out for, for emergency purposes or for needs that are that I, we just can't wait for, you can drive it for probably about 15 minutes or less under about 60 and it usually isn't too bad. Anything more than that, it starts getting too hot. So my thinking is because brakes are actually quite simple is you have a caliper. The two main components to, to this area is you have your caliper and you have your slide pins and you got your slide guides here and you got your slide pins here inside you will have your um brake pads and looking at mine um i will i'll show you them after they they are going to need to be replaced at some point i mean so same thing as the rotor you can see it's got a bit of a lip on there but for today all i'm trying to do is um see if i can figure out what's causing it to stick now low brake pads can possibly cause it to stick because it's extending out or extending into the rotor too much and then it can't release and go back so that is a possible as well but my main theory on this is that either the slide pins are seized or the um the um the the pistons inside the cal caliper aren't being aren't sliding back and forth properly when they're under pressure and if that's the case um it's not gonna be a big deal it's just a big a bit more of a mess so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get you gonna get things set up on the tripod have it sort of see what i'm doing here once i have the the caliper off um i can look at the slide pins and show you guys what all that looks like and then we'll go from there So that bolt, that bolt there looks good. That one looks good. So I'm not concerned about those. They could be cleaned up a little bit. I got some brake grease that I'll put on those. Make them a little less sticky. Put some acetone to them.
So So here's the one pad. So you can see it's pretty rusty on there. So like I said, I know it needs replaced. I mean, the you can still see the groove there. Kind of, I don't know, maybe you can still see how deep it is. So we still got a good amount of meat on there. But if you look at it on this side, you can see there's a ridge. And so this area is low, this area is low, this area is high. So the pads have been wearing on this side a little funny. I don't know if we can get this side out. There we go. So same thing, pretty crusty, but again, you can see there's a line there. So, I mean, we still got meat on there, but this one, you can see again, it's got a groove here, a groove here, and then it's high here. So, um, if I feel my rotor, I can feel that this edge here is high. This edge here is high and this is low. So that's what's causing it. So I know that it needs a new rotor. I know that it needs new pads. So the very minimal on the front of this thing in the near future, um, it's going to need rotors and it's going to need pads for the front of this. Um, it is a plan. It just wasn't expecting to have to do it as soon as I was hoping. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll get this other bracket off. I'll get the caliper cleaned up, get it all the crust off of that. Um, and then we'll get it back together, get it all lubed up. And once I have everything off and cleaned up, then I'll bring you guys back. All right. So you go to the dealer or your mechanic or whoever it is that you have work on your vehicle. You tell them that you're having a sticky issue with your brakes. And they say, all right, 500 bucks. We'll fix it for you. And you're like, great. We know realistically 500 bucks is not going to really be what it is. They give you a call back a couple of days later and they say, we fixed it, but now it's $800. Oh, 500 to 800. That's a, that, that's a substantial jump. What caused it? Well, this bracket here that holds this together is held on by two bolts and these two bolts are torqued to 220-ish foot-pounds. A lot of torque. Unfortunately, when people work on these previously to you, you can see that um, this bolt is fine, all bit a bit worn on the head. You can see <laughs> this bolt got worked over by me. And you can see in my hand, all the other variations of trying to get this out. Essentially what happened, this bolt got rounded off. So I had to find a way to extract it. Um, and basically it consisted of me welding several different variations of nuts and bolts and heat uh, to, to the bolts to get the bracket off. And eventually I got it off. Um, in doing so, because the bolt got wrecked, that's why I've got these two new ones here. I will, um, Put the GM part number for those in the description so that if you ever have this issue and you need to have that part number, that, that will be there. Um, and doing that because of the heat, so you can see the slide pin boot here is intact, but you can see the slide pin boot here um, is not. It got destroyed. So to do that, um, had to pick up a slide pin Boot kit it comes with four of them, uh, one, two for each side. I will have to get, oh, there's the part number for it. Uh, if you can't read it, I will also put that in the description. So before we do anything here, we do have to put um, new boots onto the, uh, the bracket. And it's a pretty simple, um, fix. It's kind of hard to tell when you're looking at it this way, but if you look on this one here, um, you can see the top is all worn out, but you can see it's kind of shiny maybe there. And then if you look at the new ones, it's 
So this is a replacement. Um, you can see that it's got this silver lip and it presses down and there's threads inside here. And basically what happens is your slide pin, so you can see mine here is all gross, so I'll just do a quick clean on it. So that's the slide pin boot. Um, there's threads in this end here, and basically this comes in this way. Slides over, and then it'll basically come over top of this lip, and then these threads will thread into the threads that are down here. So it goes like that. So what we have to do first, uh, before we go any further, is we have to pull off these old ones and just a matter of using a hammer and a chisel or a screwdriver or whatever you have. Um, basically what you're trying to do is trying to get underneath the lip in here so that you can get a hold of it and then yank it out. So um, I will get one started. I'll get these two out. I'll show you those when they're out and then um, I'll show you how to get them in the, the new ones in. And when I'm at that point, I'll bring you guys back and show you. Okay, so you can see how there's that pocket there. That's where that little lip sits in. The other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to replace these. the little rubber um, bushings, if you will. They go down inside the hole, and this is your slide pin, and they basically are like just a guide for this. Um, mine is like sticky and falling apart. The kit that I got comes with new fresh ones. Getting those out is way down inside that hole. So I just took a flathead screwdriver, pushed down, kind of put some pressure on the side and then just kind of rotate it. Problem is, is that they're sticky and they're old. That's my, like, this is how my screwdriver looks. And there's that old one out. I think just from heat, probably from the brakes riding as much as they were, age, and just overall, they just wear out. It's gonna clean that up real quick. So there's that hole, there's that. Just push it in, we'll grab. Our slide pin. Put the slide pin and screwdriver seated. And we're gonna to wanna to put our new one in. Our new uh, boot. So there's our hole. There's that. I'm just gonna set it in. Like so. Got seven eighths deep socket. Fits over the rubber nice, sits on the flange nice. And I'll just tap it down and tap it into place. All right, a little bit more stubborn than I anticipated, but both of them are in. Had to use a 7 8 wasn't quite the right size, but I was able to sort of finagle it and get it around and get it in there. Um, looking at the slide pin, you can see there's a wear mark and then the rest is kind of rough. So what I'll probably do before I stick this in is I'm going to just get some fine sandpaper and just clean that up. Um, same on this one. You can see that rough, that smooth wear mark and then the, the rough is all, the rust is all um rough so we'll get that again the other one just clean it up a bit so originally i was thinking that i was going to take the time and pull a lot of this stuff apart and be all like hey let's uh let's paint it and clean it and get rid of all the rust on here but then i got thinking to myself well is this the problem with this thing or not? Because if it's not the issue and it still seizes, then I gotta take it all apart again 
and then I'm back at square one. And before you all yell at me about anti-seize, I do have some. I don't know where it's at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything on and then um, deal with that later if I have to fix it. If not, well, then I'm just going to end up having to deal with some pain in the ass stuff later on. I guess I need to put the rotor on first. It's on. So when I was taking this off, I was trying to find the right size of socket, but it appears that I don't have one. And I have tried every wrench that I have, except for something that falls into like a 20 or a 21 millimeter wrench or socket. So I'm just going to put these on snug today. I'll have to run out to a parts store at the, before I finish this so that I can torque these down because they do need to get torqued down to a considerable amount. I think the, I think I said at the beginning, the torque spec on these is like 221 or something so it's a very it's a fairly substantial so I want to make sure that I have the um, right size for it see a 13 16 is almost quite there but not quite. You can use the 12 point on it, but it's not the right size. With these being, these being six, a six headed bolt, I wanna make sure that uh, I have a six six-sided socket to put these back on. And in fact, before I go any further and possibly ruin these two new ones, I'm not even going to continue doing that. They can stay just like that. I will have to probably run out or get someone to give me a hand with the proper size for that. I do have um, one of the old bolts that I can use for comparison, but I also might just Google it. Um, but I'm going to just put in these slide pins. Ooh, my ceramic brake grease is partially separated and quite smelly. Okay, so I'm just finishing up here. Uh, just a couple of things to go over. So first, um, can't really see them now, but these bolts back in here, right there, that guy that holds the, uh, this bracket on, it's a 21 millimeter bolt or a 21 millimeter head. So get yourself a good impact 21 millimeter, six sided, six point, uh, socket for that. Doesn't cause any problems. Um, when I was putting the, these little rubber, when I was putting these little rubber boots inside the cavity, apparently I was a dough head and I actually stuck two in there. So these can actually fit <laughs> two lengthwise in there, but it's going to mess up your, um, your slide pin. 
So I had to pull that one out and, and then I was able to put it on the other side and make sure I had those two. Um, other than that, this went together pretty easily. Um, apparently this is a floating caliper. I um, haven't really seen a design like this. Uh, most of the time that I've seen the, the, the caliper is floating, but not in the sense where it's like the brake pads and the, and the, and the rotor are sort of holding this all together to keep this attached. Um, the slide pins that come through here, um, they only secure to here, but the slide pins come in here. So this floats back and forth. So this can move back and forth like it's supposed to, but everything in here, all in this area is, is basically keeping those two pins um, from going anywhere. So it can't go backwards and fall off because of just how the pin configuration is. Um, open up the bleeder valve, let some fluid puke out so that uh, if there's any built up pressure or maybe a, the calipers weren't working properly, um, allowed it to do that. Uh, I gotta put the wheel back on. Once I have the wheel back on, um, for the most part, hopefully as long as there's no issues, this should be done. So I'm going to put the wheel back on, we're going to go for a test drive, if everything's good, that'll be the end of this video. Um, if not, then it may either be a continuation of this video, or it will be a part two into figuring out what further could be wrong with this. Um, apparently it's a common issue on these trucks where um, this dragging issue happens, and a lot of times people can say it's actually the caliper. So I'm hoping it was just a matter of everything just kind of rusty and gross and sort of seized up. Um, if not, then I may be looking at replacing the caliper on this. Um, the spots for the uh, slide, the, the, the hardware here, um, they're a little worn. So, I mean, the caliper bracket itself um, may need to be replaced, but uh, the easiest part right now would be the caliper. So I'm going to put the wheel back on, take it for a test drive, see how things are. If it's clear, clear and good, end of the video. If not, further diagnosing. Uh, so I'll do that and then we'll be back later. Well, doesn't this look all too familiar? Yep, came back apart. Um, so I put everything back together, cleaned it all up, did all the slide pins, cleaned it all up. And then I was like, well, we'll see what happens and I'll take it for a drive and we'll give it a few days and then if it works good, then great, I'm done. Um, if it doesn't, then it's probably going to be a caliper replacement, which I really didn't want to do, but it ended up being that. So did some digging around, found out the truck is being a 2500 HD. It's got the 9900 uh, brake package on it. So it was a bit of a um, troubleshooting to try and figure out what uh, I needed to replace the caliper on this. Did some digging, found out which one I needed, called up Napa. And I got this part number here. And um, there's a couple other part numbers that it can cross reference to. I'll put those all down in the description. Um, basically on this, uh, one of my concerns was with this bracket, um, it looked like it was kind of getting a little bit worn in these areas here for the hardware and stuff. Um, I had already replaced um, these boots and the, and the rubbers inside. So, I mean, it was mostly done I hadn't done, I hadn't cleaned up or did anything with this, um, just sanded it. But um, what I discovered was with that part number there, if you take a look, not only does it come with the caliper, it also comes with the bracket, the slide hardware, new pins, new boots. So it's this, this whole kit um, is basically ready for. So that kit there, this one here from Napa. Um, can be ordered off Rock Auto, whatever it is. Um, it's a full kit ready to go. So what I'll be doing is I'm going to be putting the new caliper and bracket on this. Once it's all together, um, then I'm gonna, my plan afterwards will be to do a brake flush on this. I don't have hardware to do a proper one. So I'll do a, what they call a, a one man bleed with technically two people because of how big the truck is. I don't wanna be getting up and down. Um, basically I'll be starting on the back and then working my way to the front, but all you do for a one man bleed is you just put a hose over top of the, the brake bleeder screw, put it into a jar with fresh power steering fluid, and then someone can press on the pedal and it pushes the fluid through. And because the hose is in the fluid, no air can ever be sucked back. So it's a quick, easy way to do bleeding when you don't have any special equipment. So 
Uh, I'm going to get the caliper back, the bracket, the caliper on, switch the hoses over, do a brake flush, and then I'm going to take it for yet another drive, and hopefully we win this time. I don't want to be taking this apart again, and I don't want to be spending any more time on this. It shouldn't be this difficult, but unfortunately, um, I don't know the history of this truck, and I've owned it for technically two years, so I don't know if the caliper's ever been worked on before or the brake fluid has ever been flushed in this, so I just figured, hey, we're doing the caliper, we're doing the bracket, let's do the flush, and we'll do it all at once and fix this side. With that said, driver's side, who knows? Maybe the driver's side will fail. If it does, well, I'm prepared. So, so for now, I'm gonna get that back on. Once I have it on, I'll bring you guys back and show you the work done. All right, so last time I had the wheel off the truck, I decided to give it a few days to see uh, if changing or just cleaning up the slides, cleaning up the hardware, everything like that would make the truck work. Drove it around for a few days, found out that it seemed okay. Tried driving about an hour and about 45 minutes into that hour, uh, the brake caliper stuck again. So I had to stop for lunch, let it cool down and then made it home. Um, after that, I basically had decided, you know what? Uh, it's just gonna be my best interest to do a full caliper replacement on this thing. And so I did. And um, last night I did the caliper uh, and all the hardware and all the brackets and stuff like that. And today again, I went for a drive, went for a couple hours, no issues. Truck is good. Now, there are issues with the brakes on this thing that are gonna have to be addressed. Uh, this is the right rear tire right here. Um, I tried opening up the bleed screw on that last night and it was not going to come and I didn't want to try and break it off or have any issues with that. So I'm going to have to buy some tools or end up buying more calipers. I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, but for now, uh, the caliper is good on this side. I did bleed this side. Um, the fluid that came out of this was extremely dark. So I know that, um, the, uh, the fluid does need to be changed in this too, but I'm probably going to buy a power valve or a power bleeder for that. Um, because all four of these are going to have to be done and done quite a bit. So I have no issues with that. Now, the question is for you, if you're doing this or you have this problem where your caliper sticks like it did on mine, you kind of have a couple of options that you can do with this. And the first option was the one that I took first because it was the simplest. Pull the parts apart, clean them all up, clean all the slides out, put new pieces in it, and then hope that it works. Um, or you just go buy a whole new caliper and the bracket and it comes with everything and you just bolt it in and do it up. Myself personally, I would say go and do the whole bracket. Um, buy the whole kit, get it all done. Because the kit that I came with, uh, not only came with um, the caliper, it came with the mounting bracket, two new slide pins, and all the little rubber pieces that go that fit for the slide pin. And I mean, those pieces aren't expensive because you can just buy like little rubber boots for the slide pins and the rubbers. And I think I paid like $12 for the set of four. So, I mean, that's not expensive, but um, it all adds up. So honestly, in the end, if you have a caliper sticking on your truck, it's most likely going to be the caliper itself. Um, the, the pistons on these are steel. So if you live in an area where it's, you know, a lot of moisture, snow, salt, um, or maybe you just don't do proper brake flushes. Um, those can become rusted, pitted, and corroded, and then they don't slide in the boards very well. So honestly, at the end of the day, I would say just spend the few dollars, buy the new setup, throw it in the truck, and just be done with it. Um, to me personally, I don't care much for having to pull, do a job twice. Sometimes we have to, because sometimes that job, um, the first time is it fixes it and it can just be a quick fix. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, on larger jobs um, like this, I would just say, save the money, buy the whole parts, throw it in and be done with it and call it a day and save yourself hours and, and, and extra grief or stress or whatever may happen. So for now, uh, we're good, we're back. The truck is now driving, no more brake issues. Um, I still do have some stuff. You can see on the piece of cardboard under the truck that the transmission lines or the transmission is leaking. So that needs uh, to be looked at. Um, yesterday when I parked to go for lunch and let the truck cool down, I uh, immediately noticed there was another leak under the truck. Blue power steering, uh, blue, blue, blue a power steering line. So that has to be looked at. And so um, 
I got plans coming up for next week, so I need as much of this done as I possibly can this week. So probably going to focus on the transmission first and then the power steering lines, um, depending on what needs to be done. There could be videos on that one as well. I haven't decided yet, but for now, truck is driving, brakes are good. I don't have to be paranoid about going down the road anymore in this thing. So uh, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one whenever that may be. Uh, it's summertime, so my shop gets pretty, pretty toasty out here. So um, it's not very fun working in the shop when it's like 35 degrees, even with fans going. So... Uh, so we'll see you later and goodbye.